my lab did a study on left-wing authoritarianism. The first thing we did was to see if there was a clump of ideas that were statistically related that you could describe as both left-wing and authoritarian. And, and there is, and it's identifiable. It's exactly the clump of beliefs you would have been studying and would suspect. Yeah. We looked at what predicted that, predicted allegiance with that set of beliefs, low verbal intelligence, negative 0.4 with IQ, verbal IQ. So you think, well, how can people be, you know, unwise enough to to believe these ideas? And one of the answers is, well, they're not that bright, as it turns out, being female, having a feminine temperament, right? Those mm -hmm. were the three big predictors. Other predictors have emerged looking at the similar construct, left-wing authoritarianism. The best predictor I've seen is malignant narcissism. Yeah. Correlation is 0. 0.6, the 0. 0.6, right? Which is about as good as the measurement accuracy of the questionnaires, yeah. right? So it, 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 it actually opens up the question. The question is, there may be no difference between left-wing authoritarianism and malignant narcissism. And what that means is the serpents are using the language of compassion to mask their power striving. That's well, right. simultaneously claiming, well, of course we can do this because every single social relationship in the world is predicated on nothing but power. And if you don't accept that, that just means that you're a malignant liar. That's right. right? Exactly. That's Great. The What's up, everyone? Stocks with Ken here today. Welcome to an analyst of this video. This video is going to be talking about uh, how the left somewhat uses compassion to mask their power striving. So, uh, Jordan Peterson, you saw the intro. Jordan Peterson makes an interesting um insight a correlation of 0 0.6 now if you don't know about nothing about correlation i think it goes like this is how i think of correlation it goes by like the higher the degree the closest it is to one i don't know it, it explains a lot in my view it explains a lot it explains how you know the left comes from this angle of compassion but in reality if you look at it objectively you see that hey like this is just a way of you gaining control of you dictating what people can think and what people can't think censorship is a big example of what jordan peterson highlights gun control is a big example of what jordan peterson highlights that they say oh my god you just want to stand by and let children die i'm like no like the guns don't walk up on their feet and kill people people kill people people just use use the uh the gun as a means to enact that hate speech is the same thing they use the guise of compassion oh my god we don't want to hurt people's feelings no wonder the left is uh, so, so against comedy nowadays. Comedy against things that they, they hold dear. It's, oh, that's not compassionate. That's not nice. But they use it as, as a form of gaslighting like a narcissist would do in a relationship. It's crazy. They make you out to be the problem when in reality, it's they, they are the problem. And they, you can't control the speech of other people. The only thing you can control is your interpretation, how you respond to that speech. And because the left don't want to, I guess, self-regulate themselves, they think the world revolves around them. They think they can create their own reality, a.k.a. the phrase of my truth. They, they feel this need to uh, control, this need to frame everything, and this, 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 this means of creating a reality that fits into their ideology, their ideals, and not accepting the reality that there's people out there that don't see the world the same way. So here's this next clip I, I'm going to show, uh, you know, uh, as you know, Alex Jones came back on uh, X and he's fuming that Elon Musk put Alex Jones back on Twitter, calling him a hate speech monster. Right. And this is this is this is it, it plays. It. I'm not saying that uh, P, uh, Pierce Morgan is a narcissist. I'm just saying the language that they're using, you could sum up the, most of the left's attacks ad homina attacks as gaslighting, fringe extremist smearing. Right. And this is a conversation when they're talking about uh, gun control and how you you'll see the, the language. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to look out for it and see if you can pick up the patterns that Jordan Peterson was pointing out. And the main, main thing I use that intro for Jordan Peterson video is to point out the way of the how they use language, uh, the, the language of compassion to hide their power striving, a.k.a. hide their. Hey, I just want to control what you do. But I'm trying to pretend that I'm doing this for the best of intentions. Let's take a look at this clip. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. Doesn't matter how many lemmings you get out there on the street begging for them to have their guns taken. We will not relinquish them. Do you understand? And that's why you're going to fail and the establishment knows no matter how much propaganda, the republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns. How many gun murders were there in Britain? How many great white sharks? No, how many... 
kill gun people murders. every year, but they're scared to swim. Right. How many gun murders were there in Britain? A very year? low amount. I already went over those How statistics. Many? Do you know? Uh, it was only a few hundred. No, no. How many gun murders? I actually, actually did pull up the statistics. Here, let me pull them out right here. I figured you'd do that. Gun murders oh, in wait. Britain last UK year. UK violent crime, capital of Europe, London no. Telegraph. Here, let me it's give you more. It's quite a simple question. Well, that's the oldest. You're a very loud that's the old, man. No, no, that's the oldest Perry Mason noise. tactic to ask me some little factoid. It's not a, it's not a little factoid. I already said earlier, We're talking about England a has a lot lower gun try, crime rate because you me, took all the guns. Let me try exactly but my But you've point. got hordes of people burning down cities and beating old women's brains out every day. Let's try again. How many <laughs> gun murders were there? Oh, you're going to ban your fist now? In Britain last year. Uh, how many uh, chimpanzees can dance on the head of a pin? Hmm. I already went over those statistics. Do you know the answer? Uh, no, I don't. I, you said it's, hundreds. It's very low. You said hundreds. Yes. It's actually 35. Well, the point is you can... Against 11,000. Do, do you understand hey, the difference between 11,000 Yeah, England and wants 35? to ban knives now because tens of thousands are getting stabbed. Right. But do you understand the knives? difference? The knife doesn't a, kill people. Do you understand? The gun doesn't kill people. Yes. Listen, do you understand, do you understand between you're not going to pull on America's 11, heartstrings? They know your script, hmm. okay? You're not going to get our gun. I like the commentary that Alex Jones like pushed back against. He said, hey, 35 gun deaths in England compared to 11,000, right? That's the, the point that Pierce Morgan was trying to make, that, hey, you guys should do gun control. And he's been had this particular thing with guns. I don't know. Maybe he thinks like everything's run well in the UK. To me, America uh, had the revolution for a reason, right? And I, th I think this is a... a, a if you see how he comes across, he's like, oh, you know, it, you, that's my point. If you just take all away all the guns, people will stop dying. And that's not necessarily the case. You just replace the gun with something else. Someone's gonna, the, the, the violent action is still going to happen. They're just going to replace it with something else. That Alex Jones, you, he just pointed out astutely that crime is, the like, UK has the highest crime rates in Europe. The US don't deal with that. I mean, it does deal with high crime rates, but it depends on the cities, right? And my, there's an argument that's been made that the, the more guns a community have, the less crime they experience because there's, uh, I say it, a consequence. There's a deterrent. The gun, the gun, gun use in America is majority used in defensive cases, aka the person was protecting themselves, their property, a loved one, right? And they don't even count the cases where the gun was seen as a deterrent for uh, avoiding crime. Right. And the best, best example I, I have to illustrate this is if you had a sign on your yard and it said that I'm a gun free zone. Are you going to are you going to experience more crime or less crime? The idea is you're going to experience more crime. Now, if I put on my yard, hey, I'm a gun to patriot right <laughs> on my front yard. Am I going to experience more crime or less crime? The idea is you're going to experience less crime because why? There's a consequence. If I go if I break into the gun free, the gun free house. I can have my, as long as I'm bigger than the people in there, I can have anything I want. If I break into the gun house, it don't matter if it's a single woman living there. It don't matter how big or small she is. It don't even matter if she's actually a woman. My ass, my, my butt may get smoked if I go into that house. You get me? Consequences. And at the end of the day, human nature, right? This idea of a gun-free society, like, it, it, I, I feel like it's, it, it, it's, it exists in la-la land, right? And that's the that's the language of compassion that a lot of people have to watch out for. And how we get gaslighted into these bad ideas is because they they try to pull on your heartstrings, try to get you emotional. And usually, you know, you know what they say. You don't make good decisions being emotional. So I want to end off this video with a final point, uh, a tweet I found from Charlie Kirk. And this is another form of how uh, the left uses compassion to fight for solutions. And in the intro. Uh, Jordan Pearson also mentioned how they have a like they have a low ability of articulating themselves left wing authoritarians not I'm not saying this is this is a, a cascading effect of all leftists I'm just saying that a lot of the people that hide in the left's ranks who are authoritarian tend to use tactics like this when they don't have an argument they try to appeal to emotion here's a tweet from uh, he's a, uh, a ex post from Charlie Kirk. Black undergrads are getting into med school with far lower GPAs and MCAT scores than applicants of other races, right? Unsurprisingly, once they graduate, they're more likely to fail as residents or require remedial intervention. Does this sound like compassion? Does this sound good to you guys? Like, like we need to, we need to stop looking for superficial compassion and look for, like, we, we need to stop, we need to stop trying to look good instead of doing good.
This is not doing good. How is setting up a, a group of people to, for failure is doing good, right? And then, right, so now a New England Journal of Medicine a medicine article wants to, an intervention to dismantle the overpolicing of black residents. There is no bottom. There's no rock bottom to DAI lunacy. These people are literally willing to kill you in the name of diversity. Here's the perspective, right? So they want to dismantling. They want to dismantle the overpolicing of black residents. This is inviting racism, right? October 5th, 2023, right? Because they don't even see the correlation, right? They lower the standards for these applicants, right? AKA less qualified people are getting into an institution. Then they're surprised that these less qualified individuals are getting remedial in intervention. Make it make sense. If I make a standard where I accept white undergrads with a lower GPA than average and a lower MCAT than average, and then I start noticing that a lot of them start um, falling behind, they're failing, and I had to intervene. No one's gonna write, no one's gonna write an article about dismantling the over policing of white residents. That's not gonna happen. People are just gonna be like, "Hey, that's what happened when you have white privilege. You get into school just because you're white." Okay, I'll accept that argument. Now let's 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 reverse it. Let's invert it. Black resident, you get in lower GPA on average, lower MCAT on average, right? Unsurprisingly, you fail. Then they they decide to do a remedial intervention. And now there's an article coming out that we must dis must dismantle the over policing of black residents. Like, let's call it down the middle. Right. And this is why I don't agree with DEI at all. This is not compassion, man. And then you keep and they keep using this language of c uh, compassion to gaslight anybody that don't agree with their, their worldview, their, their perspective on this issue. But they don't want to look at the results the same way that uh, Pierce Morgan didn't want to look at the results. You took all the guns away. You embolden criminals. Criminals know if they walk up on an average law-abiding citizen, there's they have limited they have limited options uh, in defending themselves. So you almost you in an, in an inverted way you incentivize more crime, just like here in an inverted way DEI incentivizes more discrimination, because in a day, if you guys keep pushing this DEI stuff and we keep finding out that black students are getting special treatment, aka getting black privilege. And then in real world, like me, I'm, I'm a parent. I have my two kids. I hear, oh, there's the black pediatrician. My butt's going to ask, hey, um, what your GPA score was in in, um, in med school? Oh, 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 um, you know, oh, and then you're, you, you're, you're, you're the black. Why are you looking over my shoulder? Oh, I'm just, I just want to make sure everything's okay. Right. Or people start or, or there's an article that comes out. Oh, people are less trusting of black doctors. I wonder why. Like you, you guys don't understand the, the results or the things you're actually advocating for and the reality of this. We suffer more from imagination than from reality. And the reality is if you lower standards for a group of people, they'll become less trustworthy when they get out. That's the, that's 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 common sense. This used to be understood, but not anymore. We need to get back to meritocracy. We need to get back to may the best person win. Because all this trying to put your thumb on the scale and try to be compassionate, fair, oh, we need equal representation, oh, there's not enough black people in this field, so let's lower the standards so it make it easier for them to get in, it's not doing them any favors. But, you know, I digress. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you agree? Do you agree that left-wing authoritarianism is based on narcissism? Or aligns with narcissism, sorry? Do you think that the left-wing solutions tend to be self-centered in a way, self-serving in a way? It, it, it comes across virtual signaling to me, but you know, that's just my opinion. Let me hear yours in the comment section. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. I know it's kind of long winded, but I appreciate you guys for watching to the end. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.